Hey guys, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. I hope everyone is doing excellent out there. I've just been looking for Sasquatch stories, you know, same as usual. Today I have a Bigfoot encounter that was sent in to the channel, and it is from the state of Washington. The title is My Experience, and it was written in by Patrick T. I went cross-country skiing by myself on a gated and locked logging road in the Black Diamond area of Washington State. I parked my Datsun up at the gate with the four other vehicles belonging to other skiers. The logging road is a gentle constant uphill grade winding through tall Douglas fir and western red cedars with an occasional clear cut of the Ware Hauser tree farms. There are no towns or settlements on this dead end road that climbs to about 4,000 feet and it was covered with about four or five feet of snow that was somewhat packed down with very good parallel ski tracks. The best part about skiing a road like this is the scenery and when you are done it is a fun no effort downhill ski back to your truck. After about four miles or so I started to pass other skiers coming down the hill and by counting the groups I could tell I was the last skier going up the road. I continued on until I got to an area where the skiers had stopped and turned around because there were no more ski tracks up the road. I felt energized enough to blaze my own tracks further up the road but only about a half mile until I came to a clear cut with a gorgeous view of the north face of Mount Rainier. With this winter scene covered in fresh snow, blue sky, it was unusual for Washington. I was enjoying the view and then look up the road to where it disappeared around the bend and noticed a person that looked like a native Alaskan in a parka from behind his right side. Where did this thing initially come from and where did it get sugar cane to eat? It was a weird question I asked myself. He was sitting down on the rocks and logs piled up at the corner of the road. He or she laid the sugar cane across his lap and reached with his right hand across his lap to the left side of the stick and peeled a strip of it and held it up to his mouth and either licked, scraped with his teeth or smelled it. We had both been enjoying the view of this mountain and I noticed his parka and patches of different fur like the spots on a baby deer. His face was like a Native American with a little fur on his cheeks. That's when I realized who I was looking at and saw that the parka was really the body hair of this being and what I thought was a hood of the parka was a conical shaped head. Just about when you get the feeling someone is watching you, he turned and looked back at me and I turned real quick and started looking in another direction but keeping a look out in the corner of my eye. Just about when you get the feeling someone is watching you, he turned and looked back at me and I turned real quick and started looking in another direction. But keeping a look out the corner of my eye at him. He started looking left around the corner and back at me like he was going to escape. But I turned all the way around and started hiking back down hill to my truck. This is my honest recollection of what I witnessed for a few months long ago. I grew up in the North Cascades of the Skagit River and I know what I saw. I've never publicly told this to anyone and my family and friends have no doubt I am telling the truth. Sincerely, Patrick T. All right, Patrick, thank you very much for sending in your story. And I would really like to hear more about this encounter. Like what did this creature look like? Did you notice any strange sounds walking in the area? And did they follow you out? Um, I'm gonna give Patrick a call and we're gonna get his side of the story and see if we can pull out any more details. Patrick, I appreciate you for sending in your story and we're gonna give you a call right now. And so I knew how many people were there, and you know, how many cars were parked and skiing up uh, cross country skiing it was good exercise, and I passed everybody that I knew had gone you know each car going down, and I went up past 
um, where the last person was, and then I went up further, made my own trail because you have to you when you cross country ski, you have like two tracks of of your ski, and you try to you know keep. And it was fresh snow, and everything was uh, you know fresh snow everywhere, and it was all everything was white, and Mount Rainier was just is really huge when you you know see it in that area and the sky was blue and I was having a great time and I wasn't even thinking of anything about Sasquatch or Bigfoot and um, I went up past where everybody stopped and I came out of a stand of trees into a clear cut where the road went up about another oh 60 maybe 70 yards and turned you know and then went over a, a ridge and um so i was standing there looking at the mountain enjoying the view and then all of a sudden i you know saw what i thought was a eskimo eating a um a sugar cane which was that's what came to my mind and um and like i, I think i put the details in my email where he laid it over his lap and reached with his right hand over to the left side and peeled like a strip of bark off and did something with it to his mouth. And uh, so I was, and then I saw what I thought was his hood, you know, on his parka. And then I realized, well, that's not his parka. I had like little patches of different um, colored fur where sort of like a seal skin fur or something, or maybe a, a, a fawn deer has the spots. And um, then that's when I realized I'm not looking at an Eskimo. I'm looking at something that has, you know, that is covered in hair. And, and it wasn't a big uh, full-size mature. It was more like, I was, I'm 6'2", and was over 200 pounds so uh it was more like my size so it seemed like a kind of a a younger not a not a full mature and um like i said his face was looked like an indian's face except for like the ch cheeks area was covered with fur or hair and um And anyways, that's when I realized. And then he kind of got like the, um, the, you know how when you think somebody's looking at you or something and you get that feeling and that's when uh, he kind of turned and then all of a sudden I turned and started looking in another direction. Like <laughs> I didn't want him to notice I was looking at him. And... Um, then I thought, well, you know what? I'm up here alone in a bunch of snow with just skis on my feet, so I just turned around and left. And that that was about it. He kind of had that nervous look, like looking on the left and looking at me and then looking on his left and looking at me. And, like, you know, he was looking to, for a place to escape. And that's when I decided to turn around and leave. Yeah, that is it. interesting. Could you see any facial features on the creature? I can um, almost visualize the distance from your description just because you could see what the face looked like and it looked like it was in a parka. So that, that gives me a good reference of how far away the creature was. But could you see anything as far as the eyes and the description of um, like, the face? Like, Well, the face, and okay, well, I don't know. If you ever looked at any... Um, Native Americans in, in books or anything with kind of a, a tanned, like leathery looking face. That's, that's what he had. He, I, and I'm guessing it was a he, um, but just kind of a, a weathered dark complexion. Uh, no, you know, a, like a regular human nose, uh, and I didn't, could, I couldn't see the eyes or, or what color or anything, but just regular looking eyes. Uh, 
practice. Just like if you're looking at somebody, you know, halfway down a football field, you know, you can, that's the way I kind of looked at it like, and, uh, mm-hmm. just a regular face, uh, but you know, the, the hair started from the forehead and up and, and that's the thing. It was a parka, you know how like a, a parka has a hood, you know, that's kind of pointed at the top. Ah, okay. And so it had a conical shaped head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I thought it was a, a hood on a parka. Mm. You know, I had fur. How long was the fur? Yeah. Was it like a ghillie suit or was it shorter? Uh, no, it was only about, I, I'm, I'm sort of guessing, but more like inches, more like six inches or so. It wasn't a long stringy hair. No. Oh, okay. It was, it was, it was long, but not, uh, stringy, maybe six inches at the most, I'd say. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, I've hunted deer and other things and it had like a winter, a winter coat, which is, I don't know if you know what I mean, kind of, you know, winter fur, winter coat, as opposed to like a summer coat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Yeah. And that's how I, you know, that's what it looked like to me. It looked like a, a seal skin parka. <laughs> and, uh, do you yeah. feel like it was looking at another creature when it kept looking the other way or was it looking at you? Oh, it, no. Yeah. I, I came up on its right, uh, rear quarter panel, I'd mm-hmm. say. And so he was sitting at the corn at the, where the road turned and went over the ridge. So he was sitting right on the edge of the ridge. And so he was, when he was looking left and looking right after he saw me, he was looking left to see like for maybe an escape route or I don't know if anything else was over there, but then he was looking at me to the right and then looking at the left and then looking at the right and you know, looking for a, and it looked like an escape route is what he, it seemed like to me. Yeah, that is interesting. Did you flee the area before the creature, or did the creature leave first? Oh, I I left first. I just turned around and, and went downhill. <laughs> yeah. Did anything else happen? Like, did anything follow you? No, not that I know of. Uh, yeah, no sounds, no smell. Uh, yeah. Any wood know. knocks before you walked in or after you left? Oh, no. Uh, no, I, I, I would say that I surprised him, you know, because I came up behind, like I said, behind him in the quarter. He was sitting there peeling something off of, the, of a stick, like the bark, and doing something he was either licking it or tasting it or scraping it with his teeth or something i don't know and he was sitting there doing that while he was facing mount rainier and like i said it was a real nice place to sit and have lunch you know i had lunch a little earlier and it was uh i wasn't sitting there at looking at the mountain but i was in the trees and uh, feeding some uh, what's called camp robbers, which are gray jays, and that would come and land on your hand and take food out of your hand. And so I had lunch before, and then I, you know, decided to go up further. So I, I thought, well, it's a it's a nice place to sit there and look. And when I came out of the trees into the clear cut. I was enjoying the view of Mount Rainier and same with this guy. And we were both sitting there, you know, doing that. And then, like I said, I came up behind him and and then I noticed him. So I saw him first and then watched him peel the bark and do something. And so I watched him for, I don't know, maybe a good minute. You know, yeah, about a minute or so, minute or two. And then that's when 
you kind of got the feeling that something was watching them and or what it seemed like to me and then that's when I turned and you know pretended to look another direction and I was looking out of the corner of my eye and then that's when I saw him looking left and right and left and right and then I thought I'm just going to leave yeah I've heard of a lot of Bigfoot stories from Mount Rainier and um, Ape Canyon area. Is that pretty close to Ape Canyon? Um, yeah, it would be in the same general area. Yeah, little. I was on. Uh, I think Ape Canyon is a little bit on the south side of Mount Rainier, and I was on the north. But um, there's, you know, if you ever get in that area, I would go to Mount Adams. <laughs> Mount Adams, has, which is in the same area. When you're on top of Mount Rainier or Mount uh, St. Helens or Mount Adams, you can see all the other mountains all around you. And um, they're all va- volcanoes. And um, Mount Adams has a huge area of um, blueberries, huckleberries. And there's a lot of... Uh, lava tubes in that area and that's what ape cave and ape canyon is uh, lava is collapsed uh lava tubes and um, so i don't know it's a it's a a perfect place for anything you know uh, and people wonder if if a sasquatch could live in that area but there's like huge herds of elk and bear and things, and if they can, you know, find enough stuff to eat, uh, a Sasquatch can, easy. And my opinion is there's that area not too high in elevation and not too low where there's all kinds of nuts and fruits and things that something can live off of, you know, and lots of fish. Every stream has a has fish and there's all kinds of little animals and you know uh, other things mushrooms and all kinds of things yeah it's the perfect place for a sasquatch to survive yeah that's yeah that's my opinion and i've i've seen other things in other places where i i grew up in the north cascades on um in the middle of the mountains on the, the skagit river and I saw, or I found things there, uh, not tracks, but I found uh, twisted uh, vine maple bushes. Or they're not, they don't grow up to be trees. They're kind of a vine type maple. And they're really a tough plant. And I've seen those twisted, which, you know, in one spot, like if you're, I don't know, twisting like a paper towel or something, but these things were twisted. So something had to grab them together and twist in a certain way. It's just, you know, I, and other things I saw a top of a a sign chewed on. <laughs> and, uh, which was, you know, and then it wasn't a bear because we, I grew up where there were a lot of bears and saw them a lot. And um, so, you know, just weird things. But I never heard one, never smelled one. Uh, Did you ever go back to the area that you had your encounter in? (laughs) That's what's kind of funny is no, I I never did. I mainly because I didn't want to bump into one again. I, mm-hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't scared or afraid. I just thought I was like intruding, you know? It's, no, that makes sense. kind of how I, yeah, I just, I felt like I was invading or intruding and I just didn't go back. Yeah. No, I I just asked because you said there was snow on the ground, so I wasn't sure if you went back looking for tracks or not. Oh, yeah. No, there's... uh, It was from the point where I saw him, what I'm guessing, 
uh, and the snow is kind of packed down. There was probably four, at least four feet of snow. And when I made my tracks, the tracks would go, um, would probably go down about six or eight inches. So it was kind of hard to, uh, to go any further up the hill. And yeah, no, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of going up looking for, I, you know, I, I felt confident in what I was looking at. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't need tracks or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Okay, Patrick. Well, I think that pretty well covers your story and I appreciate you taking the time to fill me in on all the extra details. Sure. Well, that's sort of my pleasure. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, if it helps anybody like get over, I don't know, like their fear or anything, uh, you know, it's, it could sort of help, but I, 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 I'm afraid of what I, some of the things I see, I see a lot of scary pictures, you know, on like, if I watch any of these Bigfoot videos on YouTube, um, they they always have these scary faces or they say, you know, they attacked somebody or something. And, you know, I don't think they do. And they don't, and the one I saw didn't have a scary face, just looked like a, a Native American with, you know, uh, kind of lamb chops. You know what a, a lamb chop sideburns are? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it kind of looked like that. And, uh, it wasn't, you know, to what I saw was a, a basically a, a type of person or, you know, another, yeah, another species of person. And it's probably nothing different than like if you were to see a Neanderthal or something, uh, you know, it just didn't, it, you, it wouldn't, you wouldn't recognize it as a, as a, a, a person or a people or something like, you know, and not a scary monster. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to say what's um, causing people to go missing. And I don't know. I don't oh. the encounter. The encounters that I had, they seem to be pretty nice and just go their own way. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the missing people I think are just people that get lost, panic and, drop over dead. I, when I, where I grew up, it was in the mountains and, um, I used, so I used to go fishing almost every day and my parents, you know, let me go out. This was in the sixties. Uh, my encounter with the Sasquatch was in the eighties. But so I was walking up a, an old logging road up along a Creek and noticed a person walking through the bushes and I kind of yelled at him and I said, hey, what are you doing? And he goes, Oh, and he was a, a guy that was probably in his thirties or something. And he was panicky and he came through the bushes to me and he was surprised to see I was on a logging road. Well, he had been walking for, I don't know, a couple miles only 20 feet from a logging road which and he was bushwhacking all the way and he was all panicky and he said he was lost and I gave him my canteen uh, and he drank all my Kool-Aid and I told him how to get back to where he was and I don't he was just spaced out he was just so panicky and I was in the Boy Scouts and did a lot of hiking up in the North Cascades and it's so much, it's so easy to get lost, you know, if you're like 20 feet off a trail and it's, it's, uh, on the West side of the mountains where I was is basically a rainforest. So there is so many bushes and trees and, uh, things you can get lost in, you know, and like I said, maybe 20 feet off a trail, you can get turned around and people just get lost. And so I, I, you know, it's, I don't think any too many animals are getting them. Uh, 
Uh, I don't think there's uh, serial killers out there. That, uh, people just, you know, they get panicky when they get lost almost right away. And then you don't have any food or water and they'll fall over or get exhausted and die. And uh, the animals I've seen, carcasses only last maybe a week, maybe not even that long out in the woods. Uh, you know, they get devoured by, uh, well, hate to say it, but maggots, you know, thousands of maggots will attack a person or a body and just reduce it to bones in about a week. And so they're gone. And if you fall over in the in the woods out there, nobody can see you. You're you're down below the vegetation, and you're you're just going to be lost. And uh, then you're gone. I mean, you know, once you get down to bones, then then the bones get scattered. That's that's my opinion. I, I mm-hmm. yeah, nature yeah. is pretty brutal, and a lot of people don't respect it. Right, and I. I grew up like I was in the Boy Scouts and stuff, and so I can I always use paper maps and compass. And like I said, I'm 70 years old. I don't even know how to use a GPS thing. And I mean, the cars I drive are 20th century cars, not 21st century cars. You know, they start with a key, <laughs> and uh, so I don't even use. And you know, my Cell phone is a folding one, uh, and I don't, I never turn it on unless I need it. And so, it, it's it's just easier if you don't rely on electrical devices to get you in the woods or not. You know, I know how to use a compass. I I also worked as a surveyor, so uh, you know I'm just kind of used to that that thing using a compass and stuff. So. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's just easier for me. I'm. I don't know. Okay. Well, I think that pretty well covers your story, and um, I appreciate you for sharing that. Sure. Well, I'll be looking for it on the <laughs> on YouTube. I'm like I said, I'm kind of disabled, so I just spend a lot of time on YouTube. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'll be looking forward to it. All I right. appreciate appreciate it. And I I like your style better than a lot of the other ones. In fact, I can't think of anybody else I like. Well, I appreciate that. It means a lot that you reached out to me. Yeah. Well, you're the only person I've done that to. Well, thank you very much. And, um, yeah, if you think of anything else or um, want to talk about anything else, just feel free to get in contact with me and... We'll get it done. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you giving me a call. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it means a lot to... Yeah, if somebody can use the information, then great. If, if not, then I don't, I don't care. <laughs> well, I think Alrighty. it's a good story. Well, so very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. You have a good one, and um, we'll talk soon. Okay. Right. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Bye.